Jason at Mustang Rehab. Uh, we got a big ship in the parts the other day. Uh, we got basically a bed in a box. <laughs> the truck showed up with every piece to the um, through the rear of the Bronco. We got the floor, post, rear post, eight B pillars, end caps, everything. Uh, the fuel filler covers, the corner pieces for the bed, rear support and the, uh, the bed assembly over the floor. So we're going to um, start fitting all of our new parts on the Bronco. First, I've got to get the bed pulled off. I, uh, I used my rotisserie and um, I did that this morning, but uh, through the movie magic, Joni's gonna show you a little picture of how I use rotisserie just to pick the bed up and slide it off on the trailer. And then uh, we'll start basically just methodically putting it in piece by piece and uh, see how it looks. Hey guys, here's another use for the rotisserie I designed. I can use it as a crane or a lift. And today I'm going to attempt to use it to lift the body off of the Bronco or, or the, rear, the rear body, the bed off the Bronco. I've got some 2x4s in there supporting it. And just some straps. Hopefully, it'll it'll come up. Okay, I've got floors out, so you have to have somewhere to start. Hopefully you took a, a few dimensions from your, your Bronco before you disassemble it. But uh, I left my bed in one piece, I just lifted it off and I was able to go back and pull a few dimensions from it in its spot close. When I took it off, I had the same uh, mount holes, body mount holes. That went right in. I set my floor in and then I went ahead to my floor pan up front, found the center, split the difference, and then I laid my floor in. So my floor is square, you know, it's centered here, square, square this direction. So I used, I had some pinstripe tape. So I went ahead and marked the floor so if I take it out, I can go back to it. So anyways, um, that's this one. The same at the back. Uh, I found the center of the rear bed support and then found the center of my bed floor, matched it up and just basically have it set there right now. And this gives you a, a just sort of a good general start. For those of you that don't have a Bronco or your, your bed was in really bad shape, I can give you a couple dimensions to start with. If uh, I pull dimension from the uh, gusset support underneath the floor pan to the back, I'm uh, 54 and 3 quarter inches. That'll give you a good reference starting point. See how close I am on this side. It's a 54 and 5 eighths, but this will still float. So 54 and 3 quarters, 54 and 5 eighths, and that's from the uh, spot weld location of the gusset support underneath your floor pan. And so basically what you have to start doing from here is just start mocking it together, get you some uh, Clicos or some self-tapping screws, and start putting this thing together piece by piece and I got my square out so I can square the post and we'll start putting it together from there. So we have the B pillar here in my notes. I took dimensions from this top of this little pinch weld here to the top of my floor pan with the old with the old B pillar 
And we got to remember that these are aftermarket parts and it's a place to start. And I was just checking this one from where I started and where I fitted this up already. And I'm about 3 16ths of an inch different than stock to where this one ended up when I had it on earlier. So, uh, but that's how you start. You start with this, put it at 18 and a half inches, go ahead and put you a couple screws in it so it holds it in place, and then you'll start closing your door, start seeing where everything hits. So I'll stop there, just get this one close, and then we'll go back and we'll set the post, the rear post in, so we have something to set the quarter panel on. The upper quarter because these things are in two pieces. Okay, B pillars the same way. This needs to be square. Find what your dimension should be. My uh, 66 Bronco at least was uh, 56 inches between the post. So that's I'm, that's how I'm going to build this one back. I know I went and measured from the seam of the other bed to the edge of this post was eight inches. So I've got that marked. I had this on the other day. Um, so actually it was yesterday. I spent all day fitting this steel so you wouldn't sit here and watch me go back and forth because it, it's time consuming. So if you think you're gonna put this together in 10 minutes, if you're not, it, uh, well if you do, you'll be able to tell it when you're done. So. Just take your time and I'll show you some of the stuff I had to finesse and move back and forth. Go ahead and do this. That's eight inches on the money. All right, so I'm gonna take my framing square and I just push it up against the post and you make your marks. And again, this is just a really good place to start. Mark it, hold it up and get your screw. sort of helps keep the post from rocking right now. This will get welded up once you assemble it. But Alright, so now my post is square. Check it one last time. You can't ask for any better than that. So that's good. Now let me get the quarter and I'll show you the quarter has a, the upper quarter has a uh, decorative piece that you have to buy. If you don't buy it, you're going to be play heck trying to build it yourself. But it's sort of a filler and I'll show you that real quick. Alright, all right, this is the upper quarter. It comes with this, well it doesn't come with it, you're going to order it. This upper trim piece here. Talk about that, I ordered B pillars. The picture didn't show that the B-pillars came with this dress piece, and this was from Dennis Carpenter. So I ordered these separately. Well, when I got here, the B-pillars came with the trim pieces. So I actually have four trim pieces. I got two extra for the next project. So just to save yourself 20 bucks, if you're buying their new B-pillar, it'll come with these. I had to take my saw because they, they make these these joints so tight you can't slide this between it. You just take 3 16 blade and run right up the edge of that. This steel falls in behind here. Now this is noisy, sorry.
you want this fit to be really tight and the tighter you get with that with your saw blade right in here so you'll have a more flush look right across your edge here that takes a, a lot of finesse to get it just right so you can see i, I had it on a couple different times and i finally set it on where i liked it and that's what i told you about the sharpie and marking your holes on your final assembly put there So now if you, you look at how this looks straight down, that's about as tight as you're gonna get it. If you look at the, the stock Broncos, this, this is pretty, pretty tight. So now we come down here. This is a lot of time came in to going on and off with the panel. One of the first things I did is I wanted to see my gap from here to here. What, uh, what, was, what was it supposed to be or close to it? Because again, when you're going back with these aftermarket parts, they're not always going to be the same. So you, this was like uh, almost an inch, maybe 15 sixteenths of an inch from the flat, from the horizontal edge to the vertical edge here at that point. So let me, let me just put the screw in here so it'll hold itself and then we can show the other side. Okay, um, this is what I was talking about. This right here is, is sort of a critical area. If you don't get this right, you're going to have to end up doing a lot of filler and it'll be hard to ever make it look right because what will happen is if you use a lot of filler here, it has to taper out over your door and it's you'll see it, it's a really weird line. They're usually not um, bent quite the same, so you have to work it a little bit. What I did was I started at the top and I would put a screwdriver in here and, and keep shutting the door and pulling it out, shutting the door and pulling it out until I got this, the little filler piece right where I wanted it. And then you have to sort of manipulate the back side of this quarter pushing it up and out until you get this edge matching your door. Cause this is, this is so important for this to look right. I went ahead and put the striker in so the door has something to stop on. But even without any screws down here, I'll show you how close this is when I close the door. So you can right down here. If you can come around, sort of give them a, a side shot here. And they can see how close that's fitting. This quarter, when I got it, it, it sunk in. It probably sunk in a, a, a quarter inch. So I kept working it and pulling it and working it and pulling it. And now that's, you can't ask that really to fit much better. So it's, this is just, these are, these are the places that you really have to slow down and take your time. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we didn't get anything shot yesterday, because I just didn't feel comfortable throwing it on there. So we're going to stick on the, the lower quarter real quick, but to show you sort of the same thing I talked about in the upper corner, you have to do here too. You'll take your saw and make sure this is cleaned out. So this will, your parts will be a slip fit. And uh, so take your time, just take your, your uh, cutoff saw and just grind that out. And then you'll have to start checking your gap at your B-pillar to your door all the way down the edge. And it's, you know, you're, it's just one of those things I can't tell you where exactly it needs to be because you're going to have to look at the fit because you know, mine I, I had to tweak it bend it a little bit a little bit of hammer to get it to hold it straight i'll show you that in a second Let me get this up here
episode. So I'm, I'm pulled up, tied up underneath. You know, it's nice and flat here. Here's my gap at my quarter, at my rocker. You know, it looks really good. So one area I'm not real, real thrilled with is the gap. My gap is fine here. My gap is fine up top, but it kind of tapers. So I didn't want to, but I might end up having to cut this just a little bit. What I'll do is I'll cut, I'll come back here about a quarter inch and I'll just put a straight line cut about four inches and then we'll tap it over and I'll, I'll re-weld it up. I don't want to cut it on the seam because it's hard to ever make your seam look right again. So if you cut it back, if you cut it close enough but not on the seam, you'll still have the edge and you can clean it up and it'll look really nice. Right now I'm, I'm really satisfied, it's looking really good. But I have a question. What do you guys think? I'm, I've used structural adhesive before. It's, a, it's an epoxy that is strong as welds. I, I, I've read the, the studies on it. I've used it before on different applications, but never really for body parts. And most body shops use it to put on quarter panels on new trucks and stuff like that. I was actually thinking of using that structural adhesive for the body line here you can put it on figure i can put it on really heavy make sure i have my screws in place put it all in and that would give me a really good water barrier in these seams that rust so bad and then i, I wouldn't have to reach inside here and do the wells across the top so what do you guys think am i crazy or just do it the old-fashioned way and spot weld it in so leave me a comment let me know so uh, i'm going to do the other side basically the same way and we'll pick back up uh, making sure everything's square and putting end caps on and start uh, mocking in some of the interior pieces y'all look at mama johnny she's helping me <laughs> this is mother's day and she's out here helping me get this thing put together because she said we needed content for the video He's moving too slow. I'm trying to speed it up. <laughs> <laughs> well. So happy Mother's Day to all you mamas out there. Ain't no mamas watching this. Maybe my mama. Hey, mom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well. Anyway, she's helping. So let me get back to work so we can get back to something else. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.